aka My Labs. It's August 1st, 2010, and I'm excited to give you guys finally a tour of the Dynamic Perception Time Lapse Dolly Stage 0 and the MX2 controller that controls that system. As many of you know, we've been working on this design for the better part of the last year. The goal here was to produce a simple yet superb time-lapse dolly system at an unheard of price point. It's been a long windy road. You may have been inspired by some of the awesome footage shot by Sean Stegemeyer in Iceland of the uh, volcano there or seen some of my test footage as we made our way through the process. At this point we're ready to talk about official features and specs of the time-lapse dolly kit. I want to personally thank everybody over at the timescapes.org forum for all the inspiration and feedback throughout the process. You guys are amazing. I'm really sorry about the delays, but I think you'll agree that it's well worth the wait given all the features we've been able to cram into this system. Dynamicperception.com will be the home of this system and many more systems to come. So keep an eye on that web address for more information on kits and configurations. If you want to join our mailing list, please shoot us an email to info at dynamicperception.com. If you've already sent an email and received some information from me, you might want to watch this video very closely because much of the feedback you've given to us has gone into changing some of the specifications I may have uh, sent you. Consider the info in this video the most current and up-to-date. Okay, I've got lots to cover, so let's get into this. Okay, so here's the major features of the hardware itself. Of course, it's designed to be a time-lapse dolly. The movement speed is mostly based on that, but we have made it so it will go 30 inches per minute. So that's almost real-time speed, sort of a slow cinemagraphic speed. In terms of configuration, it's only limited by your imagination. This thing can go horizontal, right side up, upside down. It can go vertical. It can go uh, diagonal, um, sideways even. So whatever the shot that you want to create out of this system, it pretty much can cover. The cart is easy to detach and slide so that you can get previews of your moves. It's going to be available in four foot and six foot lengths. The one I'm going to show you today is the six foot. It's uh, personally my favorite. Most of the weight is in the rail itself. So the four foot version is about five pounds. The six foot version is about seven and a half pounds for the rail alone. The cart and hardware pieces equal about three pounds. So for a six foot system, you're looking at a total around 10 pounds. For a four foot system, you're looking at a total of about eight pounds. It's a completely modular design for upgrades and future enhancements. So you might, you won't necessarily have to get rid of everything to to upgrade to the next level. Also, the rail is simply a 1030 part number from 8020.net and you yourself can get this rail in any length that you really want if that's what you desire. So you'll have to provide your own tripods. I'm, I'm just using some really old Manfrotto 3D heads that I'm connecting via the, the quick release plate. I'll show you real quickly how that, how that connects. I simply release the quick, re quick release plate here and I'll lift it up a little bit. And you can see that the, the quick release plate is connected directly to the rail. And here's how it's connected. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen up these connection points. and it can slide to any position along the rail. And here's how it's connected. Pull it off here. I'm using the quick release plate 
and then there's T-nuts, and those, those are just placed on the end of your standard quarter inch studs, and then they slide right into the slot and allow you to adjust the position of that, of that connection point and then just lock it down wherever you desire along the rail. Now here, let's just drop that back into place there real quickly, and there we go. Here's some other examples of just uh, quick release plates that I've placed T-nuts on. Here's another one, there's two right there. And so you can see that just about any plate can just slide right in to the system and then you just lock down that spot and then your your tripod can connect directly. Again, the whole system weighs about 10 pounds at six feet. Um, add your camera on at maybe five pounds. The whole tripod system and head should be able to support around 15 pounds to be on the safe side. So now let's look at how we release the, the cart via the belt system. There are two knobs that, on the belt clips. The upper two knobs pinch the belt. I'll show you that in a second. The lower two knobs connect the actual belt clip itself. So if we, if we loosen up these belt clips, we create a little bit of slack. Now we're able to simply unthread the belt here. And if you want to, you can even you can even loosen up the um, the belt clip, stretch it to a point, tighten it back up, and then tighten this down. And now the belt is free of the cart, and as you can see, the cart is can move along freely. Now I've had a lot of people asking if it if it works as a simple slider, a video slider. Um, well, it does move pretty smoothly. It makes a little bit of noise, so uh, we're gonna have to see people like yourself if you feel this is a good enough video slider or not. I feel like you could probably use it in a pinch, and it would probably work just fine. Um, but this this is how you release the belt system and slide it freely. Then when you're ready to reconnect the belt system, you simply re-thread the belt through the pulley system. And make sure that the belt is all biting into the, the pulley teeth. Pull everything nice and taut and then lock this down again. And now the system is locked back in and ready to use with the motor. Okay, now let's look at the cart itself here. Um, you can see I've got a 3D head on here. This is the Manfrotto 3437. Uh, it's, it's not included in the kit, but uh, you want to find your own head that you want to put on here. Uh, you can also put the MyLapse head on here if you wanted to. Uh, you can see the motor over here. And here is the MX2 controller, and I'll be talking about that a little bit later. But now let's, uh, let's go ahead and release I'm going to release the belt clips again and uh, release the cart so that we can take it off. Your kit will come with one of these sort of pocket knife uh, Allen wrench style deals so you'll have most of your tools right there in this thing. So I'm going to loosen up the um, connection points here on the sides so that we can actually see the cart itself so it's kind of there's two two quarter inch connection points on the side here so once I've released that side the whole thing comes right off and it's free these were the two connection points on the other side that I released to uh, release the cart itself so this is how you take the the cart off and then to put it back on you simply place it into the groove on this side then you bring the other point, other angle in here and connect it line it up with the holes sort of hold it in place 
and then reconnect the screws and you're off and running again. Now if you're just going to be using a digital SLR, these uh, connection points will work fine. But if you're going to go over, say, 10 pounds and get into the 10 to 20 pound range with your payload, so if you have like a, a, a rotational head or a larger camera mounted up here, you want to use what I'm kind of calling the stabilization bar. And the stabilization bar connects right here and connects to the system. So let's, let's, I'll show you how to connect the stabilization bar for the heavier camera systems. So the first thing you want to do is while the, while the um, cart is off, place the countersink screws into the countersink holes. There's uh, one right here and one right near the head here. And then turn it over and take the T-nuts and place the T-nuts, just screw them in just a tad into the bottoms just so that they stay there. So that's one, one T-nut. And then here's the other countersink hole right here. So I'm going to pl place the uh, screw that's made for the countersink right there. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put the uh, T-nut on here just to get it in place. So now that I have both the T-nuts on there, now I'm ready to place it back onto the track here and then I'm going to grab my my other angle here and place that in the side here and replace my screws while I'm holding on to it here. So now that I have have the cart in place and my, my T-nuts in position, I'm going to release this bearing off of the, sl the slider and as you can see the uh, there's two slider points now this thing will just slide right in and you just grab kind of underneath you use your other hand you can see my other hand here I'm, I'm lining up the t-nut there so and then I'm reaching around the other side and and lining up the other t-nut on the other side so now the two t-nuts are are slid into the the extrusion so you can kind of slide it back and forth to make sure that it's that it's in place or it's lined up then take your correct um, Allen wrench and just go ahead and tighten it into place so now that that stabilization bar you can see it down here is now connected to the top plate and then as the final measure, we go in to the side with the, with the outrigger sort of piece here. And so I, we slide it in to the side here and then go ahead and tighten it down from the side. So there, now the, the entire stabilization bar is in there and uh, it's ready to support a lot more weight. But I'm finding that uh, with your just your basic uh, digital SLR on the top and some sort of um, head riding on the system that this really isn't necessarily needed. So that pretty much does it for the physical dolly. Now let's look at the controller. This is the MX2 controller.